Okay, this is on the Carrier 398 AAW. And what we're going to discuss on this one is the inducer assembly and the pressure switch and how those uh, work. Uh, you know, this is a 90% furnace, so uh, it's vented with plastic pipe and does have an outside air combustion inlet fitting. So we'll see how all this stuff works uh, together. Okay, uh, there's your burners up here, here's your gas valve, these are some more controls down here. This is your inducer, falling apart. Uh, this is a pressure switch. I kind of wanted to look at this pressure switch uh, and show you how this works. This... Uh, this type of pressure switch is not used any longer. It's a little tough to troubleshoot, but let's take a look at how it works. Under normal conditions, this cover is going to be on here. With the cover on, then can't see it very well, but there's a pipe fits right on here, and this takes combustion air, and it could take it from outside. So we're pulling a negative pressure on the manifold that's down there down here and we're also pulling a negative pressure here now this should not be much of a negative pressure because the pipe that comes into here should not have much resistance to flow so I should pull a much higher negative pressure down here in this manifold. Okay. So to sense whether everything's doing what it should, we have a pressure switch here. Now this pressure switch has got two pipes coming off it. This pipe here goes over to the manifold, so it should read a fairly deep negative pressure. That's the pressure from the inducer starting up. Okay. On the other side of the diaphragm, remember the diaphragm in these things is right in the middle. On the other side of the diaphragm is this pipe. Now it does two things. Now let's go up and see where it goes. First place it goes is right here. You can see there's a T there. And one part of the T goes here. To the gas valve and the regulator for the gas valve is right here and what it's doing is it is telling the regulator what the pressure is inside there the combustion chamber because that regulator needs to know what pressure the burners are at because the burners are all inside here. Okay, so it is teeing off to here, then it goes up to here, and it senses the pressure inside here. So now I know that I have a small negative pressure in here, because I should not have a lot of uh, pressure drop, because all I have is just this pipe, and it's maybe going outside. Sometimes they're just right inside there, so there's very little pressure drop in there. And this one down here, that should read a fairly high negative pressure, because the inducer is pulling on almost directly on it. Okay. So how does this work? when we're actually operating the furnace. Let's see if we can figure it out. Okay, the tube on the left is taking the pressure of the combustion chamber and the tube on the right is taking the pressure of the manifold down where the inducer is. If those pressures were the same, meaning there's a blocked uh, a combustion area inlet or something like that, then it will not make the pressure switch. So uh, 
those have to be very different pressures, very high on the right and very low on the left in order for it to work. Okay, I've got the uh, manometer hooked up and I've got it hooked up here. I've taken this uh, tubing off of this fitting on the pressure switch. And let's see what kind of negative pressure we get on this thing when we start it up. Okay, very little change in the pressure. Now notice it won't weigh up. I'll show you what I did. Okay, with the inducer running, I'm point, showing point zero six inches of water column because everything's clear. Now this is my combustion air inlet here, and if it was blocked, like I put my hand over it, it's going to go to about 0.2425, something like that. Okay, that's going to pull a fairly strong negative pressure. That would be like if I had a bird stuck in this thing, or some bird, bird nest in it, or some silly thing like that. You do not want this furnace to start. If the combustion air, that's the air that's used to burn the gas, is blocked. So, the way the pressure switch works, we go down here, and because I've taken this piece of tubing off so that I can tell what's going on down here, and what I, I can tell what's going on inside here, then uh, it is going to pull a strong negative, like that, which would be pulled on this side of the diaphragm. Okay, the diaphragm's in the middle here, and I have to pull a strong negative here because this is mounted straight to the, uh, uh, right there where the inducer is mounted on the uh, furnace. So I should pull a strong negative because it's this goes back and is hooked up right to the manifold. You can see the manifold better here. Okay, it should pull a strong negative there to make the pressure switch change positions, but it should have a very small negative on this side if the combustion air inlet is not blocked. Once it's blocked, it's gonna go way up. Okay, now let's take a look at the pressure on the other side. Okay, let's take a look at it here. Now, I've taken this pipe off of the pressure switch. That's the one communicating with the manifold. And I put it straight into the uh, manometer. Okay, you should be able to see, I'm reading about 104 or 1.45 inches of water column. Now, that's plenty to make the pressure switch change position. But let's block off the outlet. Now here's the outlet right here. Now if I block it off, see what happens? It goes down to point zero nothing almost. I start letting more and more of it go and I get more and more of a vacuum. So when I block this off, I eliminate the vacuum. That would be imitating perhaps a blocked vent. So that pressure would go down, pressure switch would not change position, the unit would not start. So that's how the 398 AAW pressure switch works uh, to protect from blocked vents or blocked uh, combustion air inlets or an inducer failure.